I greet everyone, the peace of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, in reverence to the word of the Lord, we're going to stand up at this moment. Hey, got one. Haggai 1, chapter 1. Haggai 1. Browser. <laughs> Chapter 1 from verse 2. Here you got 1. From verse 2. Chapter 1, verse 2. You will be hearing the projection. Thus speak the Lord of hosts, saying, These people say, The time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you yourself to dwell in your parent? paneled houses, and this temple to lie in ruins. Now, therefore, thus as the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much, but bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourself, but no one is warm. And he who earn war wa wages earn wages, but to but into a bag with holes. Now, verse thir thirteen saying, then Hagar said, the Lord is messenger spoke the Lord message to the people saying. I am with you, say the Lord. Lord, we ask for fellowship with you and that your word may bless your people. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The, temp, the, the period in which the prophet Hega existed was a period in which the temple of the Lord, the temple of Solomon. There's even a song that said, I edified a house for your dwelling, a place for your eternal inhabitants. And this house, this temple that was edified, Solomon, and everything that he did not fail, he is the type of the Holy Spirit. There's a time in which this house was destroyed, was completely destroyed, and it came to the people of Israel among the anguish, suffering, and sadness, and affliction. They were taken captive, but in the time of Hagar, the Lord was doing a great work. And the desire of the Lord at that time was that his house would be reconstructed, re-edified. But the people at that time, they would say the following, look, it's still not time. There's, it's not time yet. The time has not arrived yet in which the house of the Lord needs to be re-edified. This is the understanding of the people of their time. They thought that the moment was not, has not arrived yet, had not arrived yet. It was not the right time for the reconstruction of the temple of the Lord, of the dwelling of the God Almighty. So then the Lord rises up a man called Hagar, a prophet. The word says that he was an ambassador. And the ambassador, as we know, 
we, the majority here came from another country, know what is the purpose of an, an ambassador. What is the purpose of an ambassador? An ambassador means also a messenger, a minister. And he is re representative of a kingdom in another country. In Brazil, we have the ambassador of the United States, France, England, Chen, China. And here in, the, in this country, we have an ambassador of Brazil. We have a, our embassy here, here in Miami. And so Hagar was an ambassador. He was a rep representative of a kingdom. He was a representative of a nation. And he received there his government by his governor, his king, his lord. He received a word, a message to be relayed to his subjects, to his servants. And the word of the Lord to his subject, to his servants at that time was of the time of the that the time of reconstruction was exactly that moment. So the Lord sent a message to Prophet Hagar saying, It's time to inhabit in your house with panels. So the moment in which you are living, you understand that now it's time for us to inhabit in your house that has panels. You feel comfortable, you have security, you have a, our comfort, and nothing wrong with that. But the people at that time, they were too concerned with the material things, with their personal goods or the things of this life. They were concerned with the house with panels. But they were not worried in reconstructing the house of the Lord that had been completely destroyed. The Lord uses Hagar to warn the people in the same way as you are inhabiting a house that was, had, was, had panels. Now it is, the time, it is time for you to edify the house of your God, of your God, to rebuild what was once destroyed. Would the house of the Lord remain a desert? It was a question that the servant was asking to the people. My house is inhabited. My house with bricks. But the house of the Lord my spiritual life this house is still uh, empty is God not present in this house so then he asked this question so then he said the following if the house of the Lord is not re-edified if the project of the Lord in my life is not re-edified. The Lord has, uh, has built a house in my life, but my ways, my actions, my sins destroyed this house. And because of this, the word says that at the time, the people, they sown a lot, but they harvest very little. They harvested little. At the time, you, they ate, they ate, but they never felt satisfied. At the time, the people drank, but it did not quench their thirst. At the time, people had clothing, but their clothing never got them warm. Why is that? Because the entire plan was geared towards this life. And the soul of man is never satisfied with the things of this life. And they said, whoever receives a wage, receive a wage and put it on, uh, put on a bag with a hole. So 
you're never able to pay all your bills. You receive a million dollars, and you spend a million and a half. You receive 100, you spend 150. So in other words, there was no prosperity. So the Lord, and when we look at this, we see very much when Jesus gives advice in the Sermon of the Mountain. Look at the birds in the sky, they do, do not sow or harvest, do not gather in a silo, but uh, your Father in heaven, he feeds them. The lily of the few, not even Solomon, with all his glory, uh, has dressed up with, in, in the same way as them. Is your life doesn't have more worth than the lilies? Man with little faith. So, in those days, Jesus said the following. Now it's time for us to apply our hearts to our path. So, it's time for us to search ourselves because apply your heart to my own path or my own ways and to look into myself and look with the gaze of the one who's examining like in the, uh, the Supper of the Lord man should examine themselves so that's the moment in which the people needed to look into themselves and look into their ways look into their actions look into that so that they would be able to see what was the most important for their lives, the earthly kingdom or the heavenly kingdom. So Hega, the ambassador, brings a message instead of following. I am with you, thus says the Lord. To the people at the time, they didn't, didn't, they felt there was no, they were not encouraged to build the house of the Lord. And we see the world at this time, people don't have the disposition and the willingness to reedify what was destroyed in our lives by the enemy of our souls. So the Bible says that he used Hagar, the ambassador, who represents the Holy Spirit, the representative of the king, heavenly kingdom, to rise up people, to bring encouragement to a people, to bring hope to a people. And it is interesting that in those days, God uses the messenger, his representative, his ambassador, to speak about a covenant. I made a covenant, covenant with you. My brother and sister, God has made a covenant with us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God has made a pact, an alliance that cannot be broken. We may break the alliance on our end, but the alliance from the part of the Lord cannot be broken. God established a covenant, a pact, an alliance. And it was an alliance for the entire life, for the entire eternity. Jesus, when he dies on the cross of Calvary, he validates this alliance. He confirms this alliance. And when he goes there with the, his last breath, he says the following, it's finished, so it is done. The entire project of God for the salvation of man is finished through Jesus. So the Lord speaks about this pact, this, this alliance, the covenant that the Lord has made with His people to His servants. So He said, once again, in a little while, and there is even a song that speaks about it. The people thought that it was not the moment, but the time is not is right now. Once again, why is why is he saying once again? Because salvation is only one. Rapture is for us is only once. You either go or not. So once in a short while, 
So in a couple of instants, and, and we are living this prophetic moment in a short while of the time called Son, that at any moment in twinkling, twinkling of an eye, the ones who died with Christ will resurrect, and we afterwards will be transformed and raptured. So he speaks about this prophetic moment. And this prophetic moment, the house of the Lord needed to be rebuilt. My fellowship with the Lord in this prophetic moment it needs to be rebuilt. The temple, and the Bible says, don't you know that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit? And that the Holy Spirit inhabit in you needs to be rebuilt? Because in a short while, at once I'm going to shake heaven and earth and the seas and the dry land. And when Jesus speaks about his return, in the book of Luke, Gospel Luke, he uses his, uh, exactly these words, and there were the signs of heaven and moon and stars and earth, anguish of the nations. Because of the perplexity of the seas, man fainting of pain, then you see the Son of Man in the cloud come with great might and power. Blessed be the, the, the Lord. So this message was an alert for the people to get ready, for the people to rebuild their spiritual life. Because God wanted to once again inhabit and reside in your heart. And one of the name of Jesus is Emmanuel, which means God with us, God with us and Christ with us, hope of a glory, his hope of eternity. And this was the feeling that the Lord wanted to see in the heart of his people in those days. And that's the hope of living, of staying with the Lord in his eternity, in this new heaven and this new earth. You know, make all the nations sh shake, and and I will fill this house of glory. Thus says the Lord of hosts. This is the desire of the Lord, my brethren, for for me and for you. Fill your house, fill your life, my life, of the glory of the Lord, of the grace of the Lord, of the mercy of the Lord. Let's fill our lives with the Holy Spirit. Thus says the Word of God. Apostle Paul, when he was baptized, he says, the Bible says that he was filled with the Holy Spirit. The desire of the Lord is to fill our, ho our house with the Holy Spirit. And the word of the Lord, my brethren, said that were, there were only two months when the Lord speaks with the, his people was a month, the seventh month. Two months later, the people, the place is desired, the heart of the people, this, this mission to, for ratifying their spiritual lives. The Lord uses once again his servant and asks a question. Is there still seed in the silos? The people, they were living the times of the re-edification of the temple. And we are living also in those same days in which the Holy Spirit is re-edifying our lives. He is transforming our lives. He is filling us with His might, preparing us for the day of the victory, the day of the rapture of the church. But there is still seed in the silo. That was the question. And the answer, olive tree and the fig tree, and he uses four plants. It speaks of, about the olive tree. It speaks about the joy of salvation. Uh, the, they say still, Videde speaks of um, some grapes. When, when the Lord loved your life, the seed, 
which was the faith, the strength. This moment that you felt a great joy. This joy will never leave my heart ever again. It is the joy of salvation. Is this seed present in you? Because the Lord wants to use you so you can produce fruits. The Lord speaks about the fig tree now. The fig tree speaks about the prophecy, the seed of the prophecy. What the Lord spoke to you one, one day, where he, the Lord revealed himself to you alive, has shown a plan, a project, and the seed, this prophecy. The pomerang uh, tree, it speaks about fellowship. If we walk in, in the light, in the same way that he is walking in the light, we have fellowship with the pom pomerang tree, the, Lord, the church, body of Christ. The seed of fellowship needs to be present in our lives. Because whoever isolates themselves, they sin. The church is the body of Christ. A member cannot be sown outside of the body because they will just rotten. If you take a member of the body and put it outside, the body will continue. But the member will just be destroyed. So it's the seed of the pomerate. And then the, finally the olive tree now. Olive tree speaks about what? It speaks about the Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus, the vine, the true vine, vine uh, because the Lord has anointed us. He anointed us for the ministry. We have been anointed for salvation. Because one day, the Holy Spirit was poured out, and you have been anointed, my brother and sister. You not only be called, but you were being chosen by God to participate in this project. The project of the, of the desired one by the nations. And he said, the, the olive tree has not produced its fruits. Maybe the seed that was placed in our hearts may have not produced fruits. But the Lord Jesus is saying something interesting. You know what he says? Go and produce fruits. So the servant of God needs to produce fruits. Because it is an order, it's an order from the Lord. And may your seed remain, your fruit may remain. But in those days, the people of the Lord is not producing fruits. But he is saying something interesting. But from this day forward, I will bless you, thus says the Lord. They were not uh, missing out on the fruit, but they were missing the blessing of the Lord. When they chose to re edify the house of the Lord, the Lord provided all things. Now I'm going to bless you in everything. From this day forward, I will bless you, thus says the Lord. And that's the desire of the Lord bless you, yours, and my life, and all our lives. If your work is not producing fruit, and the situation is not good, if you receive here and then you lose it there, if you come to the house of the Lord, rejoice, and then you leave the house of the Lord, you get sad. Here is everything good, and outside is everything bad. Everything is bad. So now you need to apply your heart to the things of the Lord. Search my Lord and know my thoughts. Try me and see if there is any evil path in me and guide me through an eternal path. That's the prayer of David and the prayer of the servant of God. And the Lord said through the prophet, from this day forward, I will bless you, thus says the Lord. So when we put in our hearts the purpose of serving the Lord, of re-edifying our lives, spiritual lives, from this day forward, from that day forward, the Lord bless us in every area of our lives. Amen.
Glória a Jesus. O Senhor mostrou uma, uma mulher que ela tem vindo regularmente aos cultos. Praticamente quase todos os cultos. Ela está, ela está presente. E o interessante é que todas as vezes que ela vem aos cultos, Every time she comes to the service, she receives a blessing. She receives a joy, a peace, a refreshing. But she leaves this place with a blessing. But as the day passes by, she does not apply her heart to the path that she needs to walk. And wherever she walks, and whatever she does, she ends up again causing her to lose. God does not take anything from you, but you lose it. You lose the fellowship, you lose the sensibility, sensitivity. You also lose in your material life. Business start doing badly, everything start doing wrong, going wrong. She gets involved with, with the things of this life. She gets embarrassed with them. There's a verse that says the following. The ones who does the, good, the right things does not get, in, get into problems. We are in this world, but we do not belong to the world. It is an instruction from the Lord. But sometimes we, we get involved in the things of this life, we end up losing what we have acquired when we come up to the house of the Lord. So then we realize how much the Lord is good. Imagine how much God is good. His mercy. They renew every morning. So this sister come here and loses, come and loses. But the Lord continued blessing her. But you need to get out of the situation. Your bag is, has a hole. You receive the money, you receive the blessing, but you cannot retain the blessing. You need to repair. You need to apply your heart to God's paths. Only you and God know what has interfered with your fellowship with God and what has caused you to lose. Because when we, when we are called into the presence of God, we are not called to lose. The word says that we are more than victorious. Very well. So my sister, you are being called to be victorious. You are not called to, be, to lose or to be defeated. That's why the Lord continues to persist and the blessing that he has for her life. The Lord has shown through the spiritual gift that from this day forward, this sister was going to make a new stand. She would repent. And the great benefit of salvation goes through two things. I'm almost, almost preaching again here, right? <laughs> Two things. The first is to repent. Repent. And the second is, who knows? To convert. You need to repent and convert. Become a convert. The people here in Maranatha, they know the song here very well. What I once was, I no longer am. But I'm, I'm not what I'm supposed to be. But through grace, when I see him, I'm sure that I'm going to uh, be in the glory. Here is the secret.
thankful, Lord, because you have transformed our lives for your love towards your great persistence toward our lives. For your mercy, Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, once again, glorify you for your holy name, for the sacrifice of our, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the cross of Calvary that reconciled us with you, Lord, and brought fellowship to, with you, Lord, in this hope to, to inhabit in your eternity, Lord. Bless once again your people, your church, and protect us, deliver us, hide us from any evil, and prevent us, Lord, from going astray from your plan and your project, and that once again, we, every day, we may be proceeding to heaven, to the servant vocation, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory. We ask for your night and peace of your presence. That's the service and the Sunday school that is going to take place tomorrow. Glorify your name, we pray in the name of the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say, in the wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and sweet and eternal consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. I'd like to inform the brethren that it's tomorrow at 10.30, uh, we're going to have, and also 7.30 p.m., we're, we're going to have another service of glorification. This month is a service geared, uh, it's a month geared toward the, uh, the youth and the ones who are in college. We need to pray for this topic so that the Lord may produce great experience to our youth. In the beginning of the month of May, the 7th and 8th, I'm, I'm sure, 7th and 8th, Saturday, Sunday, we will have a meeting in south of Florida, gathering Brandon to Hollandale, Boynton and Orlando. We're going to have a Gospel Without Borders. We're going to be broadcast from Hollandale. We're going to have an evangelization on the afternoon and a special service at night. And from this day forward, the Lord is going to need to be praying for, so that the Lord may offer great experiences to them. If you need a, a prayer, just raise your hand. And to everyone else, the peace of the Lord Jesus.